Hi again, my name is Daniel and if you are interested in 360 cameras then I am the guy to speak to. Today I'm going to be talking about virtual tours and the best cameras to use to create them. Now virtual tours are probably the easiest and the fastest way to start making money with your 360 camera. It's probably the most popular question I'm asked which a camera should I use to create virtual tours. A lot of the time it's uh, to do real estate which is the title of this video but to be honest this comparison will apply to um, regardless of whether you're doing real estate, you're doing it outdoors, you're doing it in a restaurant, you're creating it in an art museum, whatever I've done, all these kind of different virtual tours in different places and the comparison applies to all of them. So yeah, uh, like I say, I have been doing virtual tours kind of professionally for like a year or so now. I've done a few places um, like gyms, uh, museums, I've done some flats, some big houses, I've done some events, all kinds of different stuff. And I've used a few different cameras depending on the budget and how long I've got and how much time I have to uh, do it. Basically, I've come down to using three different types of cameras. You may have seen some other comparisons where there's just been like loads of different cameras, but to be honest, I've tried a lot of them and there's only really three that I use now um, and the others are just really not worth it. And I'll tell you why. Um, the reason I use these three is because they have bracketing as an option. Uh, I think bracketing is the most important feature you need to create virtual tours, to create that look, to create that kind of HDR feel. It makes the virtual tour look so much better, so much more professional, and clients really, really like it. So I think that is uh, kind of very important. So the cameras that can do that in terms of cheaper 360, all-in-one 360 cameras are the Ricoh Theta V and the Xiaomi Media Misfit. These are the two cameras that can do uh, bracketed photos. This can do it automatically, combine it all in one. This, you need to use some software to combine them manually. So uh, yeah, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. This has a higher resolution. This, yeah, can do it automatically, like I said. However, if I need a super high quality virtual tour for a client who really, really wants high quality, then I don't use either of these cameras. Instead, I use a wide angle lens with a DSLR, which is what I'm filming with right now, and a panoramic tripod head. So this may look really scary to you if you've never seen one. Basically it just attaches to a tripod and spins around and it allows you to basically take a 360 photo using like six or seven different photos and then you have to stitch them together. Basically what I tend to think about when I'm choosing a camera for a virtual tour is uh, these four different aspects. Uh, one, time. How long is it going to take me to do this? How long do I have to do it? Two, workflow. How complicated is the workflow? What software does it require? Three, price, how much does the camera, how much does the rig cost, how much does all the software cost, and how much money am I being paid, uh, because is it going to be worth my time? And four, quality. Obviously, quality is very important. Is it got high enough quality for the environment that I'm shooting? Has it got a high enough quality for the client that uh, wants it? Has it got a higher quality for uh, the people who are going to view it? Um, on and better depending on what device they're going to view it on. So these are the four things I consider for choosing a virtual tour camera. Uh, time, workflow, price, quality. I think these are the four things you really need to consider. So I've done a virtual tour of this room behind me using these three cameras all in the same place. So we're going to have a look and compare them and see uh, what the difference is, what the strengths and weaknesses of each one are and kind of which ones are best suited for which kind of environments and the types of virtual tours you want to create. And hopefully you'll be able to choose between them and decide which one is best for you. And after I've done that, I'll come back and tell you kind of how much they cost, what software you need to use, and um, kind of what I would recommend based on uh, the virtual tour that we've seen. So yeah, let's get going. Let's do that now. Okay, so for this comparison, I have basically created four virtual tours in the same place in this room here. Um, and I use the MeSphere, the Theta V and the DSLR rig. So uh, the MeSphere has been used twice, once with bracketing and once with just raw. So the bracketing features, uh, you know, combining three photos, different, uh, different exposure levels, and the raw photo is just on its own. So we can see the difference between the two. Um, and like I say, then I did one with the Theta V and the, uh, the DSLR. So what we're going to look out for now is basically the quality of the photos and the tour that you can get from the uh, different methods of creating them. So uh, we're going to look for noise, we're going to look for overexposure, we're going to look for quality, uh, detailing, and uh, we're also going to look at, at the colours, the HDR, whether that has much of an effect. So let's start uh, here with the bracketed MeSphere. Uh, tour, which uh, as you can see here, it's just been highlighted. Yeah, so this is a shot with the MeSphere bracketed tour. So let's look at first the uh, detail. The detail is uh, not that great, really. Um, it's uh, 23 megapixels, so you would expect it to be quite good. But if you zoom in, uh, it does get slightly blurry. 
if you zoom out, then it's fine because and uh, that's fine because this is a small room, so you don't really need to zoom in because you can pretty much see anything, everything anyway. But if you are shooting a larger area, a larger room, a large uh, virtual tour, then that could be an issue if you needed to see things in the distance. Um, but the details close up are fairly good. There is some, uh, you know, blurriness to the edges, but that's the same with most 360 cameras and most virtual tours. Um, stitching is pretty accurate apart from here, which is a bit blurry. This is where the stitching line is. But apart from that, it's it does quite well with detail as long as it's close up. Um, otherwise, the detail kind of veers off very quickly as you zoom in. Now, what about uh, noise? The noise is not too bad. Uh, if you look at this black area, there isn't that much to be seen. It's done pretty well. The um, the software that I used to create the HDR photo, Photomatics Pro, has a noise reduction uh, option, which does really, really help. Otherwise, it is quite noisy. But yeah, uh, as you can see, there's not too much noise. It's It could be better, but uh, it's not it's not horrendous. Uh, so what about overexposure? So um, Or exposure in general. I say overexposure because it is quite overexposed. You can see outside, which is a good start. But, you know, it's quite bright, um, brighter than I would like. For virtual tours, you really want to have decent exposure or it doesn't look that professional. So that's why I kind of highlight it quite a lot. So, yeah, the Mesphere Braxid is mm, is average. Um, it's it, I like the look. I like the color. I like the color depth. And, um, I mean, it's fairly attractive. But you need to really edit quite a lot to get the best out of the Braxid Mesphere photos. Um, there are plenty of people who could do better than me with editing and uh, could make this look a lot better. But I'm just, uh, again, saying that that will take a lot of time and a lot more editing and the workflow will be uh, much longer. So I would explain why I don't really think it's worth it later. But for now, I think this is kind of average quality. Right, so this is the raw uh, Mesphere photo taken with a raw setting and it's just one photo, not uh, not HDR, not uh, any exposure. And as you can see, it is different. Uh, if we just compare the two quickly, the look of the two quite different. For a start, the detail uh, in the raw photo is a lot more apparent. You can zoom in and you can see a lot more detail. So if you compare, it's, as you can see here um, in the bracketed version, it's blurry, whereas in the raw, there's kind of it's slightly more sharp in the distance. So this would be better for larger rooms. Um, there is also not that much noise, which is good. I mean, I'd say it's roughly the same as the bracketed version. Now, the difference really is in exposure. So you can see it's even worse here. It is pretty much just a like big bright square which is not ideal at all um, you can see the difference between the two here oh, exposure I think is really important I personally find it one of the most important things so this is why I would not use just a single uh, exposure this is why I use bracketed for all of my virtual tours um, even though I think it is slightly sharper there are more details I just don't think the look is as good uh, it doesn't give that kind of HDR cool effect which I really like and I think works well with virtual tours but you know it's up to you if you uh, want a very quick way of shooting uh, a virtual tour then the Mesphere um, in using RAW will give you a good detail give you large images but I just don't think it looks quite as good right let's move on to the third tour now which is the Ricoh Theta V and this is what it looks like now to be honest I really really like the Theta V um, and especially using it for virtual tours mostly because you can create HDR photos with just a single click you don't need any other software it does it all within the camera within about four seconds and it creates this and it looks really good uh, the colors are great the uh, exposure is very good. Uh, you can see a lot more detail outside than you could with the others. And it just is so, so quick. The workflow is almost non-existent. The camera is so easy to use and you create, can create very good looking 360 photos for your virtual tour. Uh, now, if you zoom in, it, it does lose detail in the distance. The resolution is limited, which is why it's not perfect. Uh, but if you are shooting for a very small area, so like, for example, a flat, a house, um, then this could be ideal because it's so quick, so easy to use, and it's very cheap. And it creates very good looking photos, I think. Um, so if we can compare uh, from between the RAW and the Theta V, I think the Theta V looks better. Uh, the colors are better, the exposure is better, the blacks are better. Um, yeah, just the color balance in general um, compared to the bracketed Mesphere. It's more detailed, it's less blurry. The colors are more accurate, you can see more details. Uh, yeah, the Theta V, really, really good. I think I'm probably going to recommend this as the better one out of the two out of between the Mesphere and the Theta V. But finally, let's go on to the final example, which is shot with the DSLR and you're about to see how much better it can get. And yeah, it's by far the best quality. Here it is. This is the DSLR example uh, using the panoramic tripod head and a uh, wide angle lens. Now you can immediately see the detail is a lot better. The colors are a lot more dynamic, a lot more dramatic. I think it looks great. It looks a lot better than any of the other examples but it does take a long time to get right. 
Now look outside. The exposure is so much better than any of the others. So if we compare it to the worst one, which is the the Me Sphere shot with RAW. Look how much better it is. It's uh, you can actually see outside. You can actually see very far into the distance outside, just like you would in reality. That's why it's important for a virtual tour to have good exposure to get that effect. Now the issue with uh, shooting a DSLR is that it takes a long time. You can get stitching errors, as you can see here, and it takes a while to correct those. Uh, you can correct them, and but you just need to learn how to do it with the proper software, and that you also need a lot of software to do it properly. So um, if you want the absolute best quality, then this is how you do it. And yeah, we can, we'll scroll through the difference between them if we zoom in all the way for all of them. See how much more detailed the DSLR is. You can pretty much make out so many more details uh, than you can with the others. So we'll just scroll through. Yeah, DSLR is way, way better than the others. But uh, like I say, it's a lot more expensive, takes a lot longer and is a lot more complicated. But sometimes that's worth it. Right, let's just go through uh, the rest of the tour a little bit and I'll show you just... Uh, it's just basically a continuing example of what I just said. So the even exposure here is quite bad, but um, you can do a lot better than I've done here if you are practiced with uh, using the software. But as you can see here, look, I didn't even do the bottom area because I just uh, didn't have the time, didn't think it was worth it. But this is what happens. You need to sit. You need to shoot every quadrant, like do six or seven or eight photos, stitch them all together, and you know that can be quite complicated. So you can see there's some stitching errors here which I would need to go back. If I wanted to do a professional virtual tour, I'd need to go back into my stitching software and correct that. But it looks good. Um, I think it looks very good. If we can do the same with the Theta V. Exposure is actually very good. See, the, the Theta V really deals with the overexposure very well. And I still think it looks very good and doesn't have any stitching issues. For this small environment, the Theta V is pretty much perfect. And that's what I would probably use um, to, to make a virtual tour of this house. Well, my house. Uh, yeah, so look how overexposed the Mesphere is. It's just ridiculous. So I really wouldn't recommend that. Um, this doesn't look very professional at all. And yeah, let's check outside because I did one outside just to show you the difference. So yeah, here's the outside shot using the DSLR. Looks great, very detailed, even in the distance. I like the kind of glowy effect, the contrast, the sky looks dramatic. Everything looks pretty good. The Theta V manages the, pretty much the same thing um, on a much lower budget and much less time. But if you zoom in, it just goes a bit blurry. So that's why that's the payoff you get. The Mi Sphere is sharp. There's got some quality there. You can see some details. If you zoom in, it doesn't lose that much, but it just looks a bit bland. It doesn't look that attractive. Um, yeah, I, I'm losing faith in the Mi Sphere. When you bracket it, it looks more attractive, but it just goes a bit blurry. So uh, yeah, you would need to spend a lot of time getting the most out of that to um, really get the most out of the Mi Sphere, you need to do a lot of editing. And the reason why I wouldn't recommend that is just because, because if you're going to spend a lot of time editing, if you're going to spend a lot of time in post-production, you may as well just use a DSLR and get much better quality. So um, yeah, that's what I chose to do. I've used all these cameras before and I've just found that at the end of the day, you might as well just spend a little bit more time to get twice the quality. So that's what I do. Yeah, so that's basically it, guys. That's my uh, kind of example of uh, virtual tour using all these different cameras um, different methods so as you can see there is a big difference between them and um, I'll discuss a bit more what I think of each camera and what you need to and kind of how they score based on what I said time workflow price and uh, quality because sometimes you don't need the best quality sometimes you need a lower budget and sometimes you need to work quickly so each of these cameras is suited for a different uh, different thing so yeah Back to the studio where I will continue to explain what I think of these cameras in terms of shooting virtual tours. So I hope you found that useful. I hope that comparison kind of cleared up some details as to strengths and weaknesses of all these different cameras. So I'm gonna go through each camera and kind of go through how they score on those four points that I mentioned, uh, time, workflow, price, and quality. So let's start with the Meesphere. Uh, the Meesphere is an awesome camera, probably the best for photos all round because uh, you can shoot in RAW and bracketing and you can change a lot of stuff and um, yeah it's all in one it's very quick uh, stitch stitching is fairly good so let's talk about time how long does it take to create a virtual tour with the Meesphere in terms of uh, using just the bracketed feature I obviously showed you the raw feature and the bracketed feature you can't do both at the same time unfortunately but you can do either or um, they were different as you can see and you could probably decide which one you prefer but let's start with the bracketed feature. Uh, it doesn't take too long to actually shoot. The time taken is in editing. You need to uh, combine them together. You need to kind of 
find the right balance you may need to try shooting again you may want to you may find out like i did that um just one stop below and above isn't enough to get rid of the bright spots uh wasn't enough to create a kind of very good uh hdr effect so you may then, then need to do it two stops so you may need to do two sets of virtual tours almost just to just in case because you you never really know what it's going to look like until you edit it to get the absolute best quality it does take quite a while it does take uh you need to use lightroom photoshop so for time i'd probably score it like a five out of ten uh it's not the best not the worst roughly in the middle workflow like i say workflow can either be long or short depending on what you want to achieve so again i would say five out of ten for workflow so what about price the actual camera itself it's very cheap like 260 dollars 250 dollars depends sometimes there's a, a sale for just two hundred dollars so the camera itself is very cheap but if you want to do all this editing if you want to get the maximum out of it you need to get photoshop lightroom this hdr uh combine some uh, software to combine the hdrs um yeah so that does add up and uh it then isn't that cheap anymore so i would again give it like a four out of ten for price um because if you want to do it properly you need to spend money on these software and finally for quality again it's a middle of the range again uh it's maybe it's not nowhere near as good as the dslr i don't think um but it's pretty good if you just want to use it in a smaller environment and for a lower budget so i'd give it six out of ten because uh, you can do better than what i showed you some people are much better at editing than me and uh, they will be able to get much more out of the cameras than i can so six out of ten in terms of quality the Theta V in terms of time, it's by far the quickest, um, I would say 9 out of 10 for that because you just literally select it, press uh, the shutter, move out of the way, it combines the HDRs, just have to take it out of the computer and upload it and that's all I did, didn't even edit anything and it still turned out very well. I Workflow again, 9 out of 10 uh, because it's so easy, so so easy. There basically was no workflow, I mean you can obviously edit it if you want, if you want to just it kind of adjust things you can obviously put it through photoshop lightroom and you'll probably have to get slightly better quality out of it it's the easiest in terms of workflow easiest in terms of the time it takes in terms of price uh the camera it's it's about 450 or 400 dollars i think no i can't remember how much it is uh i'll just google that quickly but it's 400 dollars. it just checked the theta v is 400 dollars or about 340 pounds if you are this side of the Atlantic. So uh, the camera itself is reasonably inexpensive, especially compared to a DSLR, um, and it's very easy to use. You don't really need to buy any other software. You may need to buy, have Photoshop and Lightroom just in case if you want to do some minor edits, but I don't think it's really that necessary. Um, so for price, I would give it, say, 8 out of 10, just because, I mean, the camera itself is uh, fairly cheap. Um, it's not super cheap, not as cheap as the Mesphere, but it's still fairly cheap. In terms of quality, now, the quality is good if you are in a small room in a small environment like i was like in this flat uh if you are in a huge area if you're in a grand museum or concert hall or outside in a big uh, open space this probably isn't going to do you that well because the detail does uh go down if you zoom in and um, in the distance the deep gets very blurry uh but in a smaller environment it's great but in a yeah in a large environment the resolution just isn't high enough at 15 megapixels so yeah i'll give it five out of ten for quality but as you saw i think it turned out very well in that comparison that i did so yeah um still good if you are looking for a cheaper alternative to uh dslr speaking of which uh so yes the dslr the with the panoramic scary looking tripod head Ooh. uh so time oh my god it takes so long it takes so long to create these things. If you want to do it super, super properly, you can spend so much time on these getting them perfect. And most of the time, they never will be. If you're a perfectionist, then it's a nightmare because you, there's always little things that you can see that probably no one else will ever see. So uh, yeah, it can take a long time to create just even one uh, one panorama, let alone a whole virtual tour. I've spent hours and hours and hours doing so on some of my other projects. Yeah, this takes a long time. I would give it like a two out of 10. Um, so yeah, uh, not great for time. Also, workflow is very complicated, very, uh, I mean, it's not very complicated. I learned it fairly quickly, but compared to the all-in-one cameras, it's a lot more complicated and takes a long more time. So I would give it three out of 10 for workflow because you do need to learn a lot. Price, again, the price is mm, the most expensive option. If you already have a DSLR, then uh, it's better, but you'll need to have a wide angle lens. And this is one of the cheapest that you can get. It's still not that cheap, like $300 or something. Um, but you can go up to like a thousand dollars for these things and the quality will be a lot better but um yeah it's not expensive i mean it's not cheap 
one of these things can cost you anything from a hundred dollars to you can get automatic ones for like five six hundred dollars um then you just get all the programs you need ptgy or GUI, ptgui or some kind of stitching program a hdr program ideally lightroom and yeah uh photoshop so the it all adds up so the price again like one out of ten because it's the most expensive the quality however 10 out of 10 like 12 out of 10 because um you can get some amazing quality out of a dslr rig uh if you want a virtual port it's if you are looking to get serious if you want to provide the best quality and stand out from the crowd this is by far the best and um, no matter what anyone says the me sphere or the theta view or any other all-in-one 360 camera cannot cannot beat it but that doesn't necessarily mean you need this if you are just going into something that's much smaller scale just for your own for your own restaurant for your own business for your own um real estate kind of smaller flats uh smaller houses then the all-in-one cameras will be fine but if you are looking to get into the big game the larger more grand houses um then i think this is necessary unfortunately uh, but it's fun i like playing with it it's it's fun to do and you can create some amazing images and uh, create some amazing tours so just to drive my point home let's have a quick comparison between the four images uh the four tours that i've shown you i'm just going to zoom in on uh the same photo for each camera for each rig and uh, we'll see the comparison the difference and you can see here that the dslr wins outright it's much more detailed i think it looks a lot better you can just see much more detail here uh the theta v isn't uh, as detailed the and neither is the me sphere when you use bracketing uh, for some reason it just makes it very blurry um the me sphere bracketed is actually the worst in terms of distance like detail detail and distance uh, which is a shame the raw mode of the me sphere is sharper but it's just less attractive less less uh impressive less colorful and you can change that in uh, lightroom and photoshop but you know it's just another thing you need to do and it will be good if it just worked straight out of the camera but it doesn't um so yeah that's the details i think that's important and, um i hope this has been useful if you have any questions feel free to let me know and um i will get back to you uh like i say i've been making virtual tools now for about a year so i do know a little bit about it there are other cameras out there like the gopro fusion the insta 361 and the Yi 360 the reason i didn't include those is because they don't have the bracketing feature and trust me i've tried it it just doesn't work as well um bracketing always just looks better if you want to check out my other virtual tours there's links below uh, to my Kula uh, account and you can see some of the virtual tours i've done there and yeah um i hope you'll enjoy that and if you have any questions again feel free to comment if you have any comments feel free to comment and if you want to subscribe i suggest you do so because i've got a lot of videos coming up that is going to tell you how to improve the quality of your 360 videos 360 photos using some of the programs that i've mentioned to you now um so i'm going to show you basically how to get the best out of your uh, 360 imagery 360 media um and it does make a huge difference so yeah and also be testing some cameras and i've got some cool virtual tours coming up of london so yeah if you like 360 stuff then stick around and subscribe um but until next time i'll see you around bye